So thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, for the kind introduction. Uh, the topic we discuss in this short presentation is related to the conservation and restoration of some monuments of classical antiquity in Greece. And uh, I hope that at the end of the lecture, perhaps it will be clear why, after three years we work on the subject, we have not yet arrived to definite conclusions. When we started, we were more optimistic. But finally, the complexities are very, very beyond the expectations, and there are too many problems to be solved. Finally, there will be questions to be answered rather than answers to questions. So the motive of this work is the need of all the teams that work for the restoration of these uh, monuments for, um, first, very deep knowledge of the mechanical properties of the materials, because we have both authentic stones and substitute stones, there are compatibility problems mainly. And also the need of these groups for um, knowledge about the response, the mechanical response of complexes made of stones and metallic elements. Uh, in addition, it is necessary to find some pre failure indicators and this could be perhaps through self-sensing material, but there is not yet a definite answer to the second point. You can see here a short outline of the presentation. Now the problem is dated back more than years ago. We studied the mechanical response of the fractured heavy <coughs> style of the Parthenon temple. You can see here the exact copy. And uh, during this uh, experimental work, we found out that there are some serious deviations of the experimentally recorded behavior against the theoretically expected one. We had differences both for the load-bearing capacity, the stiffness, and also the crack opening of all these cracks. So we insisted, and we found out that the mark block didn't fail at any point, and also the elements, the metallic elements, were below the yield limit. There was no motion care effect. So further study of the topic indicated that the main problem was the pull-out phenomenon and the second problem was the way we simulate in the lab the dead load, the dead weight loading with multipoint bending. These two tests finally are not exactly the same and there are some deviations. We will ignore the second point here and we will discuss only the pull-out phenomenon. In order to understand what the pull-out phenomenon is, better to see what the technicians of the Parthenon are doing. In case we want to join together a fracture of the time, the technique that is used nowadays has the first step to drill holes in the fracture of the Then we fill, they fill these holes with liquid cementitious material. The threaded titanium bars are driven within these holes. And when the cementitious material is solidified, they start the procedure to the second part of the block and then they are pushed against each other and the, block and the fractured epistyle is restored. This technique is followed not only to epistyles consisting of two fractured parts. You can see here the restoration of a multi-fractured epistyle. They follow a similar procedure for the grounds of columns, uh, for elements of the wall. In general, this is the technique followed case we have marble fragmented epistyles and the structural members. So it is definitely necessary that we should, in order to study the pull-up phenomenon, to pump data from the interior of the specimen because the mechanisms that lead to failure of the fractured and restored epistyle are activated first within the block, not at the surface of the block. So there is need to use novel techniques. Okay, acoustic emissions is familiar to all of us. And since we wanted to calibrate somehow quantitatively, because acoustic emission is yet quantitative, uh, qualitative method, we used also the pressure stimulated carriage technique, which is not something very new. Uh, scientists from Greece, from Japan, many years ago tried to use this technique to predict earthquakes. It's exactly the same phenomenon where rock-like materials are fractured, electrical carriages are produced slightly before the final fracture. So it's not yet a success. They cannot predict earthquakes. However, in a laboratory scale where noise can be eliminated, 
it seems that it works. It has been applied by some groups in Athens to study marble and cement also. And we decided to use this technique in uh, collaboration with traditional ones, clip gauges, uh, DIC, optical fibers also, which are very traditional, uh, electrical resistant current, the slide, the, which was presented uh, in the previous uh, session. And uh, before proceed to the main target, it is interesting to see the materials of such complexes, because unfortunately they are not very, they are not very friendly. We have the material marble, which was used by ancient Greeks, which is very brittle, and uh, also it has a slight non-linearity both in the tensile and in the compression regime. So this brittle material has to collaborate with titanium for reasons beyond our will. They use titanium as connecting element, contrary to what ancient Greeks did, but it is mainly a chemical decision and uh, protection against oxidation and so on. So these two materials have to collaborate with the aid of an intermediate layer, which is the cementitious material filling the holes. Uh, moreover, marble is also a material which suffers from size effect. Its mechanical properties strongly depend on the size of the specimen. You can see here some data from compression and there are similar data for tension. Both in tension and compression, its mechanical properties are strength here, depends strongly on the dimension, so we had to use specimens of bad <coughs> dimensions. And moreover, unfortunately, it is a strongly anisotropic material, slightly transverse anisotropic, perhaps the two directions are very close, but it is not isotropic. So there are too many problems, and perhaps this is one of the excuses we have for not reaching the conclusions. So these are the specimens some class of specimens, the typical one, we drill a hole in a marble block, a cubic marble block, we fill it up to the half of its length with cementitious material, liquid cementitious material, and we drive the threaded bar, and after 28 days we are in the position to carry out the test. Unfortunately, again, these tests are not standardized, so we followed uh, the standards for the typical pull-out test from uh, cement, from concrete, of course, we have here three materials. Anyway, we follow the same procedure. You can see here the typical test. There is a restricting plate against which the marble block is uh, pulled. And you can see here the various uh, sensors for acoustic emissions, the electrodes to record the pressure stimulated cancer, extensometers to measure the elongation of the uh, reinforcing bar, uh, LVDTs to measure the displacement of the plate, which is, of course, rigid, but the bars are elastic. And finally, an LVDT is positioned from the lower end to measure the relative displacement of the bar with respect to the marble volume. You can see here a typical test during pull-out. The familiar cone is, is formed in the successful test. Before we uh, reached these tests, we had too many unsuccessful ones. You can see here some typical uh, curves. There is a linear portion load versus time, since the tests are uh, displacement control, it's in fact load versus displacement. And well before the maximum load, we deviate from linearity. So this is something that we have to check why it happens. It is systematically observed in almost all successful tests. In order to continue our research, we consider consistently the relative slip of the bar with respect to the marble volume, which of course has some parasitic influences related to the displacement of the plate, to the elongation of the restricting parts, and so on. So, if we remove these parasitic effects, you can see here the relation between the load against time and the displacement of the bar, which is characterized by some well-distinguished areas. And the main question is whether each one of these areas corresponds to difficult, to different uh, fatal mechanisms. We see that this is the case, indeed. You can see here also the records for um, from the acoustic emission, the duration of the acoustic events uh, and their energy against time. And here you can see the electric charge as it was measured from the, electric, uh, from the electrodes and the cumulative energy. What is very important for us is that these two curves, what is found by the electrodes and what is found by the relative displacement, follow closely each other. 
So we have here an indication that PSC technique could be a pre-failure indicator. Now, in order to check what happens in each session, am I out of time? <coughs> we followed the, the technique introduced by Ochoa for the interpretation of results from acoustic emission tests. According to their approach, which is recently uh, reformed by Gates and his group, events which are characterized by high frequency and low array value, array value is the rise time per amplitude of the acoustic events, correspond to tensile crackings or mode one cracking, while on the contrary events with low frequency and increased array value correspond to fractures from mode two or shear fractures, or perhaps friction. Now, what happens to this intermediate area is something under discussion. How do we draw this line is something under discussion because it depends on the scale. There are questions to be answered by the groups we introduced. Uh, it's something qualitative for the moment being. So when we analyzed these events in our five regions, the six is after the low drop, we found that initially the acoustic events are characterized by increased uh, frequency. Well, as we proceed to the end of the test, we have events characterized by shear phenomena, which uh, supports our opinion that initially we have micro cracking within the cementitious material, which is the intermediate layer between mark and the bar. And as the load increases well before the maximum load is reached, we have sliding and this supports all the results that slide starts before the maximum load is reached, which is somehow peculiar, but it is the case. So, since we decided that acoustic emissions is the decisive factor, we tried to remove parasitic effects. We have too many parasitic effects, especially where the marble volume is pushed against the metallic plate. So we, draw, we, draw, we constructed different uh, specimens, which were not very successful at the first step. We tried to move away the point where marble is restricted. And then we designed different tests like this here, where the layer is until the lower end of the hole. So it is far from the restricting points. And you can see from this partial graph that all these events are parasitic and should be removed from the analysis. However, also in this test, the PSC results seem to indicate that something happens well before, and this is consistent with the results of uh, both acoustic emission and the DIC. Again, in this case, we followed the true approach to find what happens. And again, you can see that at the last steps of the loading procedure, we have in this year, well, at the first step, we have tensile cracking, again, supporting our opinion that first is the failure through fracture of the cement, and finally is the loss of adhesion between the cement and the marble body. This is a, the opposite test, pushing, again, in order to move away the supporting points from the area where pullout starts. We draw pushing experiments, the same conclusions were drawn, and then uh, we compared all these tests. They are not the same, they are not the same, but you can see that what is interesting is that the relative slide and the electric charge are in very good quantitative accordance to each other in all three kinds of tests, which I insist are different from each other. So we applied all these techniques to other elementary tests to check our assumptions. We had similar conclusions both in three-point bending tests and also in double-edge notched specimens. You can see here this drop, for example, of the electric uh, current, which corresponds to a change of the slope of the digital image correlation technique. And what is strange and not easy to explain is that in this case, at the intermediate stage of loading, we have also shear fracture, which is very strange because we have direct tension. It could be perhaps explained because marble is an isotropic material and perhaps at the intermediate loading we have events between the material layers because it is not possible to prepare specimens, dense specimens, where the material layers are exactly normal to the load direction, perhaps it's a parasitic effect. So then we tested all these in a structural test. 
I skipped the details how the specimen is prepared. And we found again that the PSC exhibits very good correlation with the load and moreover with the DIC uh, findings. Also, the acoustic emission indeed indicated here that we have here fracture of the cementitious material and then although the load keeps increasing we have finally failure of the connector and finally failure of the marker. So, uh, ignores numerical simulations. Concluding, we can say that the first problem is that the response of the complex is non-linear well before the maximum loss is reached. It means that the response for the deviation since mark is linear, titanium is well within its elastic regime, are the two interfaces. We have two interfaces metal to cement and cement to marble. An earlier study uh, a few years ago indicated that the metal cement interface is safe because the bar is threaded. So there is not relative slip between the bar and the uh, cement, which means that the responsible is the interface between mark and the cement tissues material. And we try now to improve the addition between these two interfaces. This is the previous work which indicates that the first uh, interface is, is safe. So, we didn't give too many quantitative answers. However, from a qualitative point of view, it is very encouraging that this very cheap technique, the PSC technique, gives indications and could act as a pre failure indicator because well before fracture, there is a sudden increase or a sudden drop depending on the polarity the electric current. So we should, if we should say something encouraging, is that after too many years of study, what we managed finally is to rebuild one of the columns of the Olympia Zeus stand this year. And the question is to go back. This is an artistic representation of the monument. Okay, it's not only whether we could, it is only whether we have to do it because it is part of the history. Anyway, this is the point. I know that there are too many new questions and not too many answers, but I hope that with your help, we will have answers in the future.